today's video, we're gonna go over a whole bunch of fun stuff we've been buying for this M54, M3 chassis build that we're doing. And then we're going to start putting some of these parts on the engine after we show them all off. All right, so we have a ton of parts <laughs> that we're gonna be uh, showing off today. I don't want the whole video to just be us going through parts. So we're gonna do some of the more fun parts and the, uh, the ones we're most excited about. And then obviously we've got a lot of gaskets, oil pan gaskets, manifold gaskets, things like that, uh, that we won't necessarily go over. So one of the things that you've already seen on the channel, these M3 side vents, uh, we did a custom badge on it. I'll have the video linked to that. These are a gloss black and then so are the grills that we purchased in the same set. Again, all this will be linked in the description below. Everything I'm showing you here at first was purchased off of eBay. So we're pretty excited about some of these. We have our new fog lights. We have a left and a right. These are actually something I'm looking forward to as well. These go on the front bumper uh, where the reflectors go and they're actually turn signals. Uh, I decided to do these because the reflectors are actually <laughs> kind of expensive. I was a little bit surprised even on eBay where you, know, you should be able to find a set of reflectors for like 10 bucks. They were kind of expensive and these really weren't that much more. So it'd be fun to try these out. They're already tinted. And then I'll just wire these into the turn signal so that they work alongside the side markers. Here are some IJDM toy halo rings. These are the exact same ones that you see on the 330 CI race car. Uh, we'll be putting these in the stock housings. We have the Xenon projector lenses in this M3. So we'll just be pulling those apart and uh, building them the way that we want to. So that is everything that we purchased from eBay. And as you can see, none of it was really performance or critical to the car. Uh, if the halo rings broke, yeah, that would suck, but it's not going to ruin the car. Uh, the side markers, the fog lights, none of that is really critical to the car running. And that's kind of where I draw the line at eBay most of the time uh, is, is things like that. Or if it's cheap enough where if it did break, it, it's not going to completely bankrupt you. For example, like I did headers on this car, $100, what's the worst case scenario with headers is they end up cracking and then it's just labor but it's not gonna ruin the engine to have your headers crack. So that's where I am with eBay most of the time. I'll just be really careful about what I purchase from them. But let's go on to our ECS tuning order. All right, so some of the fun stuff that we bought. These are replacement strut tower pieces. Uh, this came on the car originally, but if you remember with this M3 donor that we bought, uh, it had been ran up onto a curb on the passenger side, and so both of these were cracked. It's cheaper to buy these separate than it would be to buy the whole new kit. So we ended up purchasing those, underdrive pulley kit. So that replaces all of your pulleys and changes the length of the serpentine belt. This is supposed to give you a little bit more horsepower. And then again, a bunch of stuff that's not super exciting. So we've got the CCV system, completely replacing that. Tie rod ends, clutch fork, looked a little bit worn out even though it was fairly new on this other car. Uh, valve cover gasket, CV joint, center drive shaft bearing. The other thing that we're really excited about on this car that I don't even have on the race car are these solid engine and motor mounts. So they're going to be pretty aggressive. Uh, I'm excited to see how the car runs with that. And then there's one other thing that we purchased uh, that's a little bit more of an upgrade. A lot of this is just maintenance, making sure that the engine's going to run real nice and healthy for us is the Condor Speed Shop solid steering joint. I've wanted one of these for a long time and uh, we finally decided to get it for this car. Uh, I did the polyurethane ones on the 330CI and unfortunately they don't do that kit anymore or I probably would have replicated it because I really do like the way it feels. It, it is nice to have a little bit of play in it. Again, this is gonna be better all the way around. And then obviously with Condor Speed Shop, they sent a bunch of other cool stuff. So we got a drink cooler and some stickers. So let's get the parts installed that we can while the engine's here on the engine stand. There's gonna be a lot of things here that we can't put on. I don't want the motor mounts, anything on there until we get it up into the car. As the engine sits here, we're gonna do as much maintenance work to it as we can. The oil pan gasket, no matter what we do, that's gonna make a giant mess because we basically have to turn the engine. I'm gonna try not to turn the engine all the way over because then you're gonna, you're gonna lose all of your, the coolant that's in the engine and all of the oil that's in the engine. And it's not that I am trying to hold on to those fluids. I don't, I just don't want them all over the floor. So I'm gonna go through here and pick out a whole bunch of parts that we can do today. Then we'll get this engine gone through and get it prepped to put back in the car.
All right, so we've got the intake manifold off. A new gasket put on there. Start and replace the CCV system. We have the ICV out. We're gonna be cleaning that. I just pulled the valve cover off and this engine actually doesn't look too bad. It's a little dark here because of the, uh, the lighting. So let me get a flashlight here. I would assume based on the maintenance that this car had and the way it was treated that this would be a lot worse, but looks like they kept up on their oil changes. Uh, there is a spot up here in the front that we can see right in there that there is quite a bit of buildup. This looks like somebody's been in there and scratched at it. You can see right there. So the valve cover has been taken off before because this was glued on. It's probably a mixture of a couple things. Somebody's probably cleaned it up by hand and then it got some uh, regular oil changes like it should. So it doesn't actually look too bad. I was planning on doing some testing on this if it looked really bad, but this actually looks uh, to be in better condition than even this engine after 5,000 miles of Royal Purple. So this is what it looks like when you just keep up on your engine for a long time. And this is what it looks like when you get your engine really dirty and then you have to try to fix it. So do your oil changes and uh, you won't have any problems. I'm going to replace this gasket here. I'm going to replace this coolant hose and then this coolant hose here, these two that sit underneath the intake manifold. I'm gonna get all the maintenance done underneath this engine block. I'll do some cleaning. I cleaned around all these ports here to make sure that the gasket was gonna seal properly and that we weren't knocking dirt back into those ports. Looks like uh, everything's going pretty well. It's so much easier to work on this engine on an engine stand. Uh, the other thing I might do today is get the AC compressor taken off. That is gonna go bye-bye. We're not gonna be reusing that. So that's AC compressor, tensioner, the belt, the bracket. Uh, we'll probably lose about 15 pounds off the front of the car. I'm not sure how much they actually weigh, but I'm kind of curious. So I might weigh it after we pull it off, but that will get rid of a little bit of parasitic loss from here and we'll save a little bit of weight in the front of the car. All right, well, I was gonna document this because we were gonna do it ourselves, but uh, after I pulled the oil pan off, it looks like somebody has already done it. So the story goes, I ordered a wired oil pump nut, and what that does is it allows you to keep this nut here from coming off. On the three liters, this oil pump nut will back off, this sprocket comes off, and then you lose oil pressure, and there goes your engine. By the time you realize what's going on, most of the time it's it's too late. It doesn't take very long for that to happen. So what you end up doing is taking a wired pump nut and taking a wire tie and wrapping it around one of these uh, circles here in your sprocket and then it won't come off. This right here has been welded. So this is another way to do it. This isn't ideal, but it's not gonna come off, so. At some point, somebody cared about this engine enough to do some things that the, the oil pan gasket's been replaced. I'm gonna pull the old pan gasket off. I've got a new one, and then I've got the black RTV stuff that's designed for uh, oil pans and stuff like that specifically. So this saved us a little bit of time, but downside to this is if you ever need to take the sprocket off uh, for servicing or whatever, you have to grind that down and your threads are probably not gonna survive a lot of that surgery, that removal surgery. So unless that's a serviceable part, just the shaft, you'll probably have to replace either the whole thing or parts of this to get this off. I'm not happy, but I'm not upset. It makes me happy to know that somebody at some point knew what to look for and did do some preventive maintenance and some servicing on this car that a lot of people just don't care about. There you go, there's that. And then the washer that I dropped is right there. Yay! When you're doing your valve cover, you gotta be really careful about dropping pieces down in the head because you lose things and then it's in the engine and we all know what happens if you leave parts in an engine. So I heard this one run all the way down the timing cover 
and I heard it run all the way down to the engine and I heard a thunk. So I was hoping it'd be in here and there it is. So I'm happy about that. I'm gonna remove the rest of this oil. And yeah, the uh, internals of this motor look pretty good. I'm gonna do a little bit more digging back in here and uh, see what else I can find out um, service wise. But at some point, this will eventually have to come off. I'm not sure what we'll be doing in the future, but we are gonna be turbocharging the car. Oil pan gasket back on, putting the oil pan back on itself and getting the engine ready for the transmission to be reinstalled. The 330Ci race car is gonna to need to be moved out so I can bring the lift down. I did spend a bunch of time today going through and making sure that the lift is clean of all of the parts that I had on it. I tend to be a little bit messy when building this kind of stuff, but hopefully today I can get this in there. Now we are gonna be using some solid engine and transmission mounts. Those are right here. They're by Turner Motorsport, and I'm really excited for these. It's something that I've never had before. Uh, I'll have these linked in the description below. I think this is the only fun thing I'm doing today is putting these in. Most of what we're doing is kind of just refresh OEM parts, uh, making sure that this engine is healthy. I did not do the rod bearings or the crank bearings. So if this thing ends up having issues later on, that's most likely gonna be our problem. This has 220,000 miles on it and we're gonna be ripping around in it. So <laughs> if it has any issues, I won't be surprised at all that, that it ends up failing. But we do have another three liter engine out in the shed. We've got all of it, but like the valve cover and the engine block. So sorry for all the chit chat, kind of nervous, really excited to get this done. So. Let's swap this over to time-lapse and get the car lowered and ready to have the engine reinstalled. Well, there you go, full disrespect for the M3, an M54 B30 motor in an M3 shell. This took me about two, two and a half hours to get in there, and most of it was um, getting the car to move forward. So I didn't have the car far enough forward on the lift, and the hoist needs me to have it uh, far enough forward where the bottom of the hoist here isn't hitting this bar of the lift. And so I had to move the car forward which was a really big problem because if you can see over here, the rear end is still missing out of the back. So as you can see, we've got some lifts back there. What I had to do was take those lifts and jack up the back of the car and then use the wheels on those jacks to actually push the car forward. And then all while the front of the car kept towing out because I've got the steering rack disconnected. So that took us probably the most amount of time was getting the car forward. And then we were able to get this situated in there. I did get the engine mounts put in properly because last time I did this on the S54 wagon, I just kind of put the engine in there and I was like, okay, I'll go back in and do the engine mounts later. And for some reason, um, I could not seem to get the engine picked up enough to get this side in because the engine is sitting over this way. It was too heavy. So when I would pick the engine up, it, would stay down on this side and then lift this side up. So I could get this engine mount in, but I couldn't get this one. And what I had to do was put a stick. I used a piece of uh, two by four and I put it on the ground and I put the top of the two by four on the bottom of the motor while the lift was up. And then I lowered the lift a little bit to jack this side of the motor up. So 
I was able to get the engine mounts in at the same time. Make sure you do that. It's kind of difficult because the engine mounts kind of sit at a bit of an angle. So if you hook them up to the engine and you try to drop them in, they're not going to line up their holes. And so what we did was we got the engine just kind of hovering above where the motor mounts go. And then I slipped the motor mounts in and then just put the nuts on them just enough that they weren't going to come out. And then from there, I was able to spin them, lock them down in. And I did this side first because it's the side that is heavier, so it's lower. And then I did this side second because of how much higher it sat. So yeah, there you go. It is in the car. I am going to be running some electrical tonight, maybe. It's getting pretty late, and I've got to make sure I get the race car back in here. Um, so yeah, I am very happy with the way tonight went. And there are a few things that I totally forgot were different about this car. Um, this right here isn't on the other side. So this normally goes over there and it doesn't need to go all the way over there. So I might have to play with this a little bit. Maybe I could spin it like that. And then, hmm, weird. I'll have to play with that. I totally forgot that that's different. Uh, the, the brake where the brake booster sits. So perks to having an M3 shell left over is that this brake booster is a little bit more powerful. I'm not sure if the analog brakes are any different, any more sporty tuned or anything like that. I have no idea, but the brake controller for all that is over here instead of being tucked down underneath there. But the computer, the ECU box, a lot of the wiring, a lot of the body harness is all basically the same. The S54 wagon was almost plug and play, how compatible everything was. Really all I'm doing, and the same thing will be done to this, is tuning the ECU so that the body harness doesn't have an issue with it. Basically telling the EWS to ignore the signals coming in that aren't what the car is used to, what it should have had originally. And the tuning will be done through RevMatch. I'll have them linked in the description below. I'm gonna be having this car tuned through them and then it sounds like because I have a little bit of tuning issues with my 330Ci, we're gonna be doing a tune with that. So thanks everybody so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comments section below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports. We do giveaways there. If our giveaways aren't done there, like we had an Auxito one a while back, if I'm approached by a company to do a giveaway, Sometimes they're not done through our Instagram, but all the ones that we do, including uh, most of the ECS tuning ones, the super clean ones, all those are done through the follow list on my Instagram. So all you have to do is follow us on there again, tens of underscore motorsports. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, make sure you're subscribed, like today's video if you enjoyed it, and we will see everybody in the next one.